welcome back this is a video on wiring up treble bell silence switches um, this isn't a video that I was going to do quite yet but it was requested um, and one of the reasons I didn't want to do it is because I think it's only found in the city of Chicago if I'm not mistaken but it's still a little bit of good review on relays um, and how they can be used so basically in the city of Chicago a lot of times in a lot of types of buildings when the panel goes into trouble, it's going to ring a trouble bell. And it'll ring the bell usually above the panel, and then a lot, oftentimes another one by, depending on the type of building, by somewhere that's continuously attended, like a nurse's station, if it's a, if it's a hospital or a nursing home, um, or, or something like that. That's probably the best example. So anyway, there's two different types, basically. There's a 24 volt and there's a 120 volt. And they work basically the same way, obviously, with just a different power source. Um, and so you basically take power, either 24 volts or 120 volts, and you run it through the trouble contacts on the panel. Then you go through a silent switch and to a bell. And I drew an example of this in one of the first couple of videos, but it was a really basic example because it didn't have the silent switch. So the silent switch needs a couple of things. Let's say, for instance, it's a 24 volt bell that we're going to be using in a 24 volt silent switch. Well. The sound switch needs to be able to test the bell. So if you see down here, I drew the bell test. Um, it needs to silence the bell. So if the bell's ringing, somebody can acknowledge it and flick this switch to the right, and it's going to silence the bell. So you know the panel goes into trouble, the bell would ring, and then somebody would walk up and flick this switch to silence the bell. When that happened, this little light down here would illuminate to let people know that the bell silenced. And then when the trouble condition clears, there's something called ringback, which means this bell will still be in the silence position. Um, the bell needs to start to ring to let you know you need to unsilence it. Now, not all bells work exactly like this. Some don't have ringback. They, they silence automatically, and it's not. This would just be a little toggle switch that would, that would be spring-loaded and switch right back. But um, either way, they'd be wired the same way. So for, for right now, we'll assume it's the kind that would manually be pushed to the right and then stay there until it was manually pushed back to the left. So if, if, if you need this bell test function at all times, you know, this, this has to work when the panel's not in trouble. So you'd walk up, you push this, and the bell would ring. Plus, when the panel's normal, if this were silenced, so let's say the panel's normal and you walk up and silence the bell, well, the bell has to ring. So even in a normal state, the bell's going to need, this, this trouble silence switch is going to need, if, if it's a 24-volt system, it's going to need 24 volts at all times. It's also going to need to get 24 volts when the panel goes into trouble. So it's pretty simple how it's wired. It may look a little confusing, but let's t let's take a look at it. All right. So in this diagram, we have our fire alarm panel on the left, and all it has is non-resettable power and trouble contacts, and that's it. Then we have our silence switch, and I drew the inputs right here. All those commons not really an input, so you'll see that in a second. You got your inputs on the left, your outputs on the right. And then your trouble bells at the bottom. So let's assume if we, this is 24 volts non-resettable power, and this is a 24 volt power bell. If I wired 24 volts right to this bell, it would come on. Right? It's going to start to ring. So now we can look at how we might interrupt this these circuits to achieve what I had described before when we were looking at that trouble bell switch. So this is going to come on um, if we wire up 24 volts. So the way you wire this thing up is you're going to take common out of here and you're going to go right to your common on the input side of your trouble bell sound switch. And then you're going to come right back out of it and go to your trouble bell on the, the negative side or common side. So that's, that makes sense. That's kind of how we've done most of our fan shutdown to this point. If we had a power supply, we would usually take our negative or our common and go right to whatever we were trying to turn on. But in this case, we also have to go to the silent switch because we need, we're going to need 24 volts here to be able to um, test the bell. Well, actually, we're, I guess we don't really need the 24 volts here to, to make this little light come on because this is going to need, I'm sorry, we're only, only going to need the common side to make this light come on. Um, but so it, basically, instead of just coming right to this trouble bell, we had to go to the switch first, right? But then we can come right back out and go to the trouble bell. So now we're going to take our the positive.
positive side of our circuit and we're going to go to the trouble relay on our fire alarm panel. We're going to go to the common side of it. So now we have common, we have, we have positive voltage here, 24 volts, sitting at common. So whichever way this switch goes, that's which way our 24 volts is going to follow. And we know that we need 24 volts when the panel is in trouble and we're going to need 24 volts when the panel's not in trouble. So let's look at that. We can take, I'm going to use different colors here, let's go light blue. We can take normally closed, this is going to be 24 volts when the panel's not in trouble because it's normally closed. So we're just extending that common basically and we're going to come out right to here. So now this thing has 24 volts when it's not in trouble. Then we're going to need 24 volts when the panel goes into trouble. Well, our normally open would serve that purpose. Let's take, I don't know, let's take orange. No, let's go yellow because we already had orange there. I don't want to make it confusing, but all right, so normally open. We're going to go right here. And then all we need is to complete the circuit coming out of here, if you look on the right. So we're going to take purple and go to positive. So internally, there's some circuitry in here like anything else. But the, if, if we follow our circuit right now, we have, we have 24 volts present between these two terminals right now, you know, between common and this middle terminal, because the positive is going through normally closed, right? I could, I could follow the circuit for you. It's going through normally closed. When the panel goes into trouble, let's assume it goes into trouble, this is going to change states. That didn't, that didn't take. So now, now this 24 volts is going to go through the normally open side and it's going to put power here, right? And so then that's going to, internally, it's going to pass this, this along right to the output, but it's going to have to go through this silence switch first, right? It's going to go to the output. So then you'd silence it. And then I'm not going to draw all the circuitry internally here. It's really not that complicated, but it's a little bit more advanced than I want to get right now. But basically, you're going to take one wire from normally open, and that there's going to be terminals on the cut sheet for these, these trouble bell sound switches that say this is where you attach 24 volts when it's not in trouble, and this is where you attach it when it is in trouble. And the not in trouble is obviously just your normally closed, and when it is in trouble, that's the normally open on the trouble relay. So I think that's not too difficult of a concept. We're going to look at 120, um, an 120 volt bell, which is basically the same, same setup. It's just different terminology, you know, slightly different voltage. So now instead of having resettable power on our panel here, I drew this breaker box, which by this point we've seen a couple times. So we know that the hot, the hot circuits come into the distribution box or the breaker box, and so does the, so does the neutral, and the neutral is going to go right down to this neutral bar. That's our little white line here, so this is our neutral bar. So hopefully we can see what we're going to do here. We're going to take our, from our neutral bar and our breaker box, we're going to go to neutral on here, we're going to come right back out and go to neutral on our 120 volt bell. And we could already take, we could, we could complete this side of the circuit too, because it doesn't have anything else. So we're going to go from the, um, to hot bell terminal, right, you know, right to the hot bell terminal. It's, it's easy enough. And then we're going to take the hot side of our AC circuit, which would be any one of these available breakers, right? We're going to come right to common, just like we did with positive and the other one. One of these terminals needs you know, the 120 volts when it's not in trouble. So I don't remember what colors we used. Let's say we used orange. We went here. And the other one needs the hot when it is in trouble. We could go yellow. And now it has all, all the things it needs again. It's, it's got 24 volts at all times right here. And when it goes in trouble, it's got 120 between these two. And it loses it here, but internally it's, you know, designed to be able to process that. So I hope that's straightforward enough. Um, if not, as usual, feel free to type any comments on this video and I'll answer any questions that I can. I'll see you in the next video.